Well, I have the pleasure to be in Manchester with Mike O'Dwyer. First of all, I have to say, Mike, we're not in ideal surroundings for recording an interview like this. We're actually in a little restaurant called Licorice that does the finest bruschetta I've ever tasted. But while we're on the subject of food, Michael, um, you decided when we were in Germany that you were going to go on a, a diet. Let me first of all start by saying what motivated you to make that decision. Well, let me firstly say that isn't technically correct. I didn't decide, I was railroaded in the sense that you, before I knew it, had actually launched it and put it out on Facebook that I would lose four stone uh, in order to help the charity. I was thereby, unfortunately, totally not to committed and there was no way back because, again, the sort of sums that we're looking, kind, kind donations came in very quickly from... Uh, some good supporters and Bob Parker and Dan Healy Bob Parker Dan Healy yourself etc we've got three thousand pounds committed so far Mike and um, with that and I would hope to be able to bring in in the region of twenty thousand unfortunately there was no way back from me I did think of every way that legally I could try and get out of it sue me and for putting it on Facebook without a written agreement I did I (laughs) contacted my lawyers etc but unfortunately um, you had me I was banged to right so the only way then was to, to go forward with it so Mike let me wind back a little bit and say obviously there's a little bit of tongue in cheekness there um, over over a few beers you did confess that you were would like to be a little slimmer indeed so with the starting point in mind can you share with us how much you weigh as you sit there today what the starting point was david if i told you that i'd have to kill you unfortunately there's uh, there's no way i can reveal that no joking <laughs> apart um i hadn't weighed myself i would suggest for 15 years 15 probably more years so um I got the most horrific surprise when I got a, a scale and uh, I weighed myself as at when we said we'd kick it off, which was the 1st of January. And to my everlasting shame, I found that I was actually near as damn it dead on the 21 stone mark. Just about my age, that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, already, so you're up and away. How many days have you been at the diet, Mike? I've been only. Uh, literally since the 1st of January um, been on a, a fairly strict diet uh, three things I, I kicked in immediately was um, totally altered my eating habits so I've had the diet working I've also joined a gym and I've also bought a, uh, a bike so um, I've been at it hard uh, for, for really seven, seven days and confirm to us how much have you lost in the first seven days? As at this morning's weigh-in, it was ten pounds. So you're not you're only six pounds off twenty five percent of the four stone target. You set uh, yourself yes, for two thousand fifteen. Oh Tom, <laughs> you know uh, the first the first two stones should be the easier. I'll no doubt hit a wall, and um, even I, you know, even I will need. Um, I don't think I could continue at every day doing seven days a week at the gym etc um you know i'll probably steady out and i'm giving myself the year to to achieve it you're going to drive back from manchester today and are you going to go to the gym at the tennis club tonight mike i've got to i've got no <laughs> there's no way other than that because so much of my work is involved in sitting on my backside be it in cars or trains or or literally in front of a computer or airplanes yeah or airplanes <laughs> Um, I know that diet alone is is not going to shift it and whilst I may lose weight it's important as well that I get fitter get fit and healthy well as I say some people's body is classified as a temple for 15 years or more mine has been an amusement park (laughs) Mike I've got to switch the conversation now to the reason as apart from your health and your well-being and being around to see your daughter grow up and the lovely wife of yours for for more years the other motivation is of course the charity which is the child foundation um which you were a founder of and are a trustee and involved in the the running and the operation of the child foundation which is something we're both very proud of um tell us a little bit about why you're so passionate about the child foundation well indeed david the child foundation i think 
it's probably one of the the, the best achievements that uh, certainly in the last year that that I can really say that we've we, we, we've took forward the reason I felt that it was so important is we all see the charities today there's numerous out there what I wanted it to be was one not shall we call it illness specific I love the idea of, of spreading a little kindness where we can which is our strap line which is a strap line but more importantly that it's not geographically limited or age limited in the sense we do it for children but that can be a child from one year through to to a young adult so to speak and what we're really doing is considering every case on its merits but more importantly and, and I'm not here to to uh, to disrespect any other charities but We've all heard the horror stories of funds being raised and only a certain percentage getting through. What we felt was only by doing it ourselves that we could, you know, we could almost guarantee that for all the monies that we raised, that 100% of, for example, what I'll raise on this um, charity diet will reach the children. Yeah. And, and that is what we tasked ourselves with achieving, uh, which I think... Um, you know, it sets us apart from many other charities. Yeah, the primary goal of the Child Foundation is to maximise the amount of money that's donated that finds its way to the causes which it's been given for. And when you do an event, for example, Mike, such as a charity football match, you have inevitable costs. But we've tried. We've got this kind of barometer of seventy-five to eighty percent for anything that we do will go to where it's supposed to go, and the others is unavoidable cost. We've got no one on the payroll. Everybody's a volunteer, and. With that in mind, Mike, as far as fundraising for your sponsored diet is concerned, we've obviously got a PayPal option sitting alongside this video on the website. What message would you say to people who know you or don't know you um, about give them some motivation to put a few pounds the way of the Child Foundation and tell them, tell them how we'll respect that donation? Well, no matter what donation, whether it be a pound or whatever, uh, and as I said, I'd like to think that I've got some good friends that I can call on, but anybody out
it's Friday the 17th of April 2015 so we're just literally uh, that was all booked and we're just putting the final touches and uh, booking all the acts and uh, again if anybody is seeing this video who would like to come along um, they can get tickets via the website or contact me direct etc Mike, um, we promised to keep the Child Foundation supporters and followers updated on the progress in your diet, so let's uh, have another video interview in perhaps about six weeks' time when uh, you'll be a, a shadow of the man you once Absolutely. were. Absolutely. Let me just say, Dave, uh, I want to make sure that the people are aware that my, um, my weight, my incredible weight, is down to a medical condition. It wasn't me living uh you know uh gorging and, and and abusing myself it was a medical condition tell us what that medical condition was an overactive um what's <laughs> an overactive th th thyroid no knife and fork <laughs> <laughs> thank My, you Dave. michael dwyer thank you for your time